fucking shamed of your, your fucking stomach. They're fucking pigs! Patriarchy. Fucking rape apologist, incest supporting, woman hating, fucking stuff. You woman here! Patriarchy fuckface! You, and your sons, and your everybody, and your friends, and your fucking men! Fucking scum! This is what men's rights look like! This is what men's rights look like! This is what men's rights look like! Feminist theory is not the Bible. It is not the Declaration of Independence. It is not the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. You're damn right we target feminist ideology. Feminist ideology teaches nothing but hate and contempt for men and boys. Feminism must be like the psychedelic drug. I swear to God, because nothing they say is remotely close to reality. We are going to continue to call feminists out on their hate and bigotry, and we really don't give a damn if they like it or not. Well, you know what, feminism? If you don't like the rule of law, then don't, you know, don't be part of society. Go somewhere else. Blue Collar Red Pill, with your host, the One Dan Army, Dan Aarons, and Jack Nightrunner Barnes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Blue Collar Red Pill. Danny, are you there? I am, Jack. How are you making out today, brother? Well, Danny, I'm having a little trouble sitting back in my chair. My, my back is killing me. Um, Ouch. Yeah, yeah I, I'm home today. Um, you know, my little girl just started school, and uh, so my wife and I were at home alone, and I've got some claw marks on my back that are just just killing me right now. Oh, were they enthusiastic claw marks? Well, was there enthusiastic consent involved in those claw marks? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. Uh, I, I can't really say that it was verbal consent unless you, you know, consider non English screaming verbal. But anyway, what she said can't really be considered a language. But anyway. Uh, how are you doing up there this weekend? Or this oh, week? I've, I, I, I've been, uh, well, I, I've been busy, as usual, um, you know, digging uh, digging away at things, shoveling that gravel, ground pounding, um, and that's actually uh, the tonight's show topic. Yeah. Right. Oh, how's the weather up there? Let's let's start with that. Um, It's been kind of wet, which is good. Uh, you know, again, the farmers need the weather, uh, need the rain, um, you know. And uh, so that's kind of good. Uh, hopefully that'll help keep the produce prices down, you know, uh, in the coming months um, as, uh, you know, they start harvesting in their, their crops. Um, other than that, man, it's been really, really quiet. Uh, we've had some storms down this way. Nothing, you know, nothing major, you know, no, no, no tornadoes or anything like that. But it's been it's actually unseasonably wet. For August, this is like one of the wettest Augusts I've ever that I can ever remember, and it's been really cool. Uh, all things considered, you know, we're talking low nineties when we should be in the upper nineties. But yeah, it's other than that, it's been some really great weather, unseasonably great weather. But anyway, yeah, you were um, you attended the uh, Dundas uh, Cactus Festival in your area. Can you uh, give us a little background on, on, on that festival and what it's about? Sure. This year was the uh, 39th annual one. Um, where it comes from is uh, years and years ago, there used to be a greenhouse factory uh, in uh, Dundas, Ben Valdehus. They, they've since gone bankrupt. Um, but they had the largest uh, indoor cactus in the world, and they were in the Guinness Book of World Records for that. And so they started a festival because um, it was one of the claim to fames for Dundas, uh, along with most polluted body of water <laughs> and most pregnant unwed mothers per capita. Dundas has three records. <laughs> Guinness That's Book nice. Records. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Maybe there is something. It must stupid. be in the water. I was going to say most polluted body of water. Yeah, maybe that was in the water. Anyways, so they started a street festival. And what they do is they shut down the main street. And the vendors and other local uh, local establishments uh, put out a tent, show their wares, and you kind of get to uh, know your neighbor. There's also music going on there. Uh, this year's uh, headliners were Platinum Blonde, but we've also had Sloan play. 
uh, Teenage Head. These are all Canadian bands, and they're you know semi semi famous you know uh, around Canada. Um, also, some of my friends play uh, in the bands there, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about one of those guys later on. Um, and uh, so yeah, they shut down the street for three days. They have a parade. Um, they also have the uh, carnival come to town so that the kids can have a lot of, uh, you know, can have fun on the rides and stuff, and the parents can spend gobs of uh, money on over overpriced stuffed animals. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's interesting. Uh, you, you wouldn't think, uh, you know, Cactus Festival and Canada wouldn't go to, you know, not normally would go together, but, uh, you know, that's actually really cool. World's largest cactus. Um Used to the the yeah. company's gone belly up. The cactus is long gone. Now they're turning the uh, area into like kind of a, a a natural kind of park sort of deal gig, which is cool because uh, you know I'll, I'll let you people know that uh, I literally have deer come up on my front lawn at night sort of deal, and uh, uh, I'm surrounded quite a bit. I'm I'm not much farther away than uh, oh in Dundas, you're not much farther away than ten minutes from from some sort some sort of uh, natural. Uh, reserve kind of thing i had a deer come up on my front yard the other day he's in the freezer now but anyway um bambi burgers exactly and steaks and roast Uh, anyway but uh yeah back to the topic um you uh you were out there you know spreading the message spreading the word um tell us about some of the average people that you met and and some of the experiences you had and what all you did First, um, I'm going to uh, first let's let's back up a little bit of history of me going to the festival, um, oh, yes. and uh, because I've been doing this for three years, and I've been doing it on um, on behalf of you know uh, the MHRM uh, and uh, AVFM, uh, mm-hmm. and first year that I went, I literally was attacked. I'm just trying to pull up the link for that one, um, and so I wrote a, 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 a an old. Uh, Soul, who used to hang around a voice for men, and I wish he'd come back. Uh, by a gentleman by the name of Doctor F, wrote uh, wrote out my experiences here, and it's called "When Crutches Attack." Um, so I put that link in the low bar there. And literally, what happened the first year there is that uh, I went out the the night before the festival, and I put up posters. And uh, when I came back the next day, I noticed that they had been torn down and and literally gouged out of the aluminum pole, the aluminum light standard pole. Um, like literally, like you can literally see gouge marks in the pole. Like the, whoever took this, the, you know, that poster down was, you know, there, there was anger, a lot of anger in, 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 in their efforts. And, uh, I believe those, those first series of posters, um, weren't exactly, um, incredibly offensive. Um, you know, if you look at the, the picture here, it says, you know, stop violence against women, but not against men, you know, and they, and they, they crossed, they, they left the, the, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, stop violence against women. They left that part there, you know, on there, but gouged out the violence against men part. And so this young buck here, uh, who was faking that he needed the crutches, he, uh, uh, when I caught him in the act and I started taking pictures of him. He uh, took those crutches that he uh, was carrying with him uh, and obviously didn't need and s- went to swing at me and actually forced me back out into the crosswalk um, when I was taking the pictures of him. Now, um, luckily, the street was closed down, but it could, you know, if it had been opened, then, you know, I could have got nailed by a car coming by. Um, and again, you can see in the, uh, it's the third picture there uh, in the article, you can see like the guys in mid flight in midair in mid stride and he was running run, he was running like you wouldn't believe like the wind because I was taking his picture doing this so that was the first year um the next year I went back and again I uh, uh you know I put up posters and I worked the streets I got a little more bolder we got a little bigger so it was a little bit easier to uh um it was a little bit easier to work the crowd and this year would be the third year that I was there and uh this year it was quite interesting the, the uh, I met a whole bunch of people. The local politicians were out. Um, it's municipal elections here in Canada, so um, the really, really local politicians were out. But I also had a chance to talk with uh, Mr. Sweet, uh, the member of parliament for my local area there, and he had some interesting things to say, and we'll get on to that a little later on. Um, 
we had a rain day on Saturday, which kind of kept the crowds down a little bit. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a little disappointed in that because I like the, I like my city. I, you know, I like to, I like to see the the small mom and pop organizations and 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 stores here uh, thrive and 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 grow and and continue to support, you know, support their family sort of deal. Um, so I was a little bit, di- you know, a little bit disappointed in that. But you can't, you know, it can't be all sunshine and, and stuff. Um, so that was that's about it for general breakdown uh, uh, up to now. Okay, uh, what about um, what are some of the things that you did this year? Um, well, this year I had a whole bunch of uh, um, I had cards to hand out. I had literature to hand out. Um, mission uh, the mission or our mission statement at a voice for men and uh, our uh, value our values at a voice for men. Um, I had that on a single page document that I could just hand out easily to people, um, as well as my business card, or, you know, my voice from my card, um, and, um, you know, just willingly interacted with people. Now, the Femme Twits did come out, and they did attack some of the posters this year, which I found kind of funny because um, it, it looks like when they started attacking them, someone chased them away um, because they never, they, never got, they never finished. They only got out a few of them. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later, I guess. Um, what else did I do? I was really open. I wore my voice for men shirts at all times. Um, when I was working the crowd, I was not, you know, I wasn't afraid of anything. Uh, at one point in time, I, uh, literally walked up to a police vehicle, an empty police vehicle there. And I popped one of, uh, a couple of my cards, uh, right in their side windshield there. Um, you know, just to let them know that, Hey, we're still in town. We're not going away, and we expect them to, you know, uphold the law equally for all. So there's uh, there's a little bit of uh, uh, the first uh, video there. Um, now I only kept uh, I kept I kept the video footage down to you know very very minimal. I find that uh, you know I geez I could sit there and film all kinds of crowds and stuff like that, but you know it, it's just too much to do for one person. By the way, I worked this uh, I worked this festival by myself, um, and I would not suggest this to just anyone unless you really, really know your local area really well. Uh, my family has been here for just about a hundred years. I'm very well known. I ran into, you know, I ran into, uh, um, some family members and some people that I've known since I was in diapers, uh, in the festival there. So, um, I feel fairly safe and confident when working that crowd. Well, that's good. Um, what did you, you know, as far as working the festival by yourself, um, you, is there no one to help you, or is it just something you chose to do on your own? Well, people, you know, it's we are still fairly spread out, um, and uh, I just, uh, you know, to, when am I going to ask people to come in from Toronto and stuff? They were, you know, they, I, I made it an open invite, and you know, people just it just couldn't make it. That's just it, the way it out this year. Next year, so I it was out there. It, it it wasn't a matter of people just said no, we're not going to do this. It was a matter of you just didn't. There's just not enough concentration of MRAs in your area. Not really, and and there there's a but there's a lot of sympathizers. Um, you know, if I if I really really started asking people, um, you know, heavily, I I know that I could have counted on a few people to make it out. But uh, you know, it's it for some it would have been a bit of a travel and a bit of an issue. And uh, to be honest, I, I don't have the money to treat them for coming out here. Um, I had to, I put the whole bill for this one. Uh, so all, all in, it was, I think, uh, just, I think it was $80 for all the advertising that I, I got, were, you know, mocked up and made up and, and uh, uh, printed up there. Uh, I will point out that the print company was extremely happy. The young lady that was behind the counter, she was ecstatic about what I was telling her about. She was, you know, incredibly happy. And she, um, she actually, as soon as I said, you know, the website and she seen the prints or whatever, and I had to okay them, she goes, what's this about? And she was, you know, immediately curious. And, uh, so I started explaining things to her and, um, for she she seemed really receptive, and then I kind of hit upon how um, Janet uh, Janet Bloomfield, our own judgy bitch, there, um, you know, kind of uh, came to the realization when she had a baby boy, and she goes, you know what, I have a baby boy. She's absolutely right, and 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 she was really really uh, uh, receptive to that. So that was really nice. Um, they're called the uh, um, let me think here. What are, I got the uh, Print Factory Inc. 
um, they're in you know West Hamilton there, and they were you know really receptive. So uh, I'll be doing more business with them uh, when I need some advertising. Um, so that was really good. Um, that's yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Um, what are some of the other experiences you had with just individuals? We'll get we'll get to the politicians later, but your your average you know common common person. What how how were you received? Well, um. For the most part, nobody would bother me at all. Uh, not a soul would, uh, you know, would, would think twice about what I was saying. Um, some of the more interesting comments when I got into, uh, actually, I'll give you, uh, I'll just give you an example of how I work the crowd. Um, I, I usually say that, you know, who I am, blah blah blah. Uh, my name is Dan Parents, you know, and I'm, you know, Canadian news director for Voice for Men, and, uh, you know, men face issues from cradle to grave, and I, and then I will go, you know, on the cradle end of things, we have male genital mutilation, aka circumcision. That's not such a small cut. It is one third to one half the adult penile skin. It is four feet of blood vessels, two hundred and forty feet of nerves, and twenty thousand nerve endings. On the grave end of things, we have men dying on average five years earlier than women. And we sink more money into women's health care. Um, so that just breaks, that opens the door. And they're kind of like, usually within that quick little two-minute little blurb, I'll, I'll figure out whether or not they're interested. Now, if they're interested, then I'll start going on a little bit more. I'll start bringing up other topics like suicide. Now, that was a hot-button topic I really pushed this weekend because of Robert Williams' situation. We know how badly uh, men get it in divorce courts and family courts and how those alimony payments can drive them into the grave. Um, so that was a really hot button topic. Um, now, when some of the responses, the, one of the one of the ones that I, I thought was really quirky was when I started going when I went into the, the circumcision male genital mutilation thing. Um, the, the the person said, you know, I, I've never heard, I've never heard it described like that before. And this person is a medical worker. And then they went, but you're absolutely right. So that was a really nice positive uh, interaction there. Now, um, if the people were older, um, I, you know, if it was an older person, uh, you know, about my age, you know, middle age sort of deal, I would talk about, uh, I would talk about divorce and, and parental, you know, alienation. And I had pamphlets for that, um, uh, as well. They were donated, um, uh, by, uh, a local person. Um, uh, what else? So if they were middle aged, I would break into that. Now, if they were younger, I'd break into, I, I'd, I'd, uh, talk, I'd focus more on, um, uh, parental rights. And I, you know, I would say to them, you know, he, you know, here's a quick heads up, wrap it in latex or she's going to get your paychecks. And the younger types would like smile and go, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I know I'm right. Okay. Now listen, heads up there guys. And, and then I would explain our position on legal parental surrender. Um, I even had a couple of, uh, now I did have uh, a, a, um, a local politician or actually a provincial politician tent try and argue with me that that wouldn't be right. And, but it, it was really kind of comical because one guy was saying, I see some valid points here. And the other guy was going, no, 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 total white knight, you know, throw myself down on the sword for a woman. And, you know, yes, uh, he kept on saying, but well, he, you know, uh, he kept on saying, uh, the gentleman kept on saying, well, he should have kept it in the pants, and I would just turn around and point blank respond back to him. Well, then she could she she should have kept her legs closed. <laughs> oh, they hate when you do that. But yeah, uh, didn't you meet some kind of uh, like a? You was telling me about uh, some biker that you met that uh, um, was a uh, military or ex-military. Yes, yes, I did. I I, I interacted with bikers as well. I don't really care. We have, uh, we, we, you know, they, they have uh, sons and daughters, and I don't really care. Uh, you know, their, their sons and da- their sons deserve the same rights as their daughters, and, and the same chances, and the same compassion, care, and consideration. And I kept on hitting that home as well. Compassion, care, and consideration that we show our girls, we need to show that for our boys too. Um, uh, but uh, yes, I was just walking, and uh, I was uh, walking walking down the street actually east i was walk it's an east west uh, main street so i was walking back back down the east uh towards the east and i ran into a gentleman who i noticed had uh you know some patches on his vest uh obviously biker um you know mia mia pow um never forget um you know these these sort of patches and the canadian american flags uh, you know together um and i managed to strike up a conversation with him 
Um, now it was really, really interesting and heartwarming. Um, I, you know, I uh, talked to him a little bit about things and, uh, I handed him my card and then I pointed him towards Terrence Pop and he had already known, he already knew about Terrence Pop and him and his wife were both so very, very receptive to this and it was absolutely incredible. Um, it, it was, uh, it was actually kind of, you know, joyous, you know, Hey, we are actually making, uh, an impact here because, you know, the word is getting out. People are recognizing the brand, uh, and recognizing men's human rights. Um, and, and, you know, how we are disgustingly, uh, or how we, how, you know, we, de- we treat men in a deplorable manner. Yeah, that's cool. That is awesome. You know, Terrence Pop getting his name out there and people will find the men's rights movement through him just like they've found it through karen and 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 other people um what what are some of the other individuals that you ran into that you you had a positive experience with the local military um they had uh, a tent out there and i talked to the gentleman there um and uh i talked to the gentleman and the lady there and uh, they were they were very receptive, and again, I pointed, uh, you know, to Terrence Pop. Uh, we don't have a, a Canadian version of that, but I do know that they are failing our soldiers and our servicemen when they come back with post-traumatic stress disorder, um, you know, from service, uh, ser- you know, from doing service um, here in Canada. They are shutting down um, uh, veterans affairs uh, outlets and trying to amalgamate them into a, a more uh, into a smaller unit, really. Um, and which is uh, absolutely, it's just disgusting to me. I don't care whether you, you know, whether you, uh, you, you can, you can bicker about where the troops are going and that's not their fault, but by God, you better support the troops. Um, you know, uh, uh there's an old, I can't remember who said it, but, uh, there's an old saying, uh, a nation who, a nation that forgets its soldiers are soon for, is soon forgotten. Uh, I'm paraphrasing yep. it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Um, um, we definitely need to do a better job. I, I'm speaking for here in the United States, but we have we can do better, and we've got to do better of taking Absolutely. care of our soldiers. Absolutely. Now, I also and, brought up a couple other things. Whoops, Jack, go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. You you, you sound like you were talk, fixing to talk about something interesting. Yeah, I also talked to uh, the, the soldiers. Uh, they were actually the Navy. Um, I actually talked to them about a couple other things. Now, the first instance was of, the, uh, of this Michigan twit judge. My God, she's a fucking idiot who is, you know, screwing with a serviceman who's out at sea in a submarine, and she's screwing with him and his daughter's life right now. Um, there was just a quick little blurb about how... Uh, um, the daughter's now going to go to uh, the mother's house for two weeks, even though the mother lost custody and was convicted of uh, child abuse of some sort. Um, and that's why she lost custody in the first place. But this Michigan judge is still fucking with this poor serviceman's, the submariner's life. And I, you know, I, I wish to God that they would hurry up and vote this bitch out of office, off the bench. She, doesn't, she needs to go, like yesterday, pulling this shit on a serviceman. While he's in service, well, my God, that pisses me off. Now it also pissed off the fucking uh, the two individuals that I was talking to uh, at the tent there. They were absolutely flabbergasted. They could not believe that this was going on. Um, and they, but the, granted, they are on the Canadian side. They could not understand that. They could not fathom that. Um, yeah, a little bit. I guess a little bit of play on words there. Fathom. Anyways. Um, that was one issue that I brought up. The other issue was is uh, uh, an issue uh, that happened across the pond there in England, and that was where two women received thirty five thousand pounds each in a payout because their hands could not fit around the the uh, the uh, guns that they uh, they were supposed to carry, uh, being security at a nuclear facility. Uh, the two women received thirty five thousand pounds each, if I remember the story correctly. And uh, they claimed that it was discrimination based on sex because their poor whittle hands could not wrap around the gun grips and they could not shoot properly. They couldn't handle the weapon properly. Now, I don't give a good goddamn. There are, there are also guys out there that hands, you know, that, whose hands would not be able to handle that weapon properly either. I don't give a good goddamn. When it, it comes to a situation like that, I don't care who the fuck you are, but we want the best people 
in the security at those places. We don't want these half, you know, we don't want this half-assed affirmative action in there. Tell me, would you rather have somebody who can handle the gun, man or woman, or some little twit who filed a human rights case so that they could use a lesser, uh, a lesser tool? Me, I'll take the proper person, the person who could do it on merits. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, did you have any negative reactions to you being there? Um, uh, no, they don't come around anymore. <laughs> It's it's getting kind of comical. I, I, I like I can be uh, uh, the only negative reaction was that they okay. So I put up the posters, and and I'm very respectful of my town. We have here we have two types of uh, poles around here. We got old concrete or three types. We got co- concrete standard light poles. We got aluminum standard light poles, and we've got these heritage uh, light poles that are painted black. Now I don't put my I don't put our posters on those heritage poles. Because they they make downtown Dundas look like it used to back in the 1800s, and, and they are aesthetically pleasing. And I feel I feel it's just disrespectful to the businesses and, and my hometown to kind of you know put posters all over those poles. But the aluminum ones and the concrete ones, fair game. Uh, even the light uh, the light control boxes, fair game. Because in my books, if it's owned by uh, a government entity, then it is fair game. The 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 government is failing. Um, uh, is failing men and boys uh, in Canada. So if it has government money, it gets my uh, promotion for men's human rights advocacy. When the government stops failing men and boys in Canada, then I will no longer have to hang up my posters or our posters for that matter. And I won't have to be the advocate of that. Uh, I am. Hopefully I'll be able to retire, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. <laughs> so, um, so, so what happened was that I, I would go up and I'd put up one poster. And if anybody asked me a question about it, you know, and people did ask, stop and ask me questions and I explained it to them. I spoke to a wonderful couple who just moved in from uh, um, the Hamilton, Toronto area. They just moved in. They just moved here a couple of years ago and they were both for it. Um, and and, and uh, again, you know, Janet Bloomfield, uh, you know, how that aw- awakening moment when a mother realizes that her son uh, you know, could be, you know, is being demonized and vilified by these these gender ideologue femitwits, um, you know, these vaginots. Um, you know, they they they're they're disgusted in them. No wonder, you know, eighty about eighty percent of the population is saying, "Yeah, screw you, feminism. You're a bunch of lies." Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's so. What they did was that. Uh, so I put up one poster on the polls from you know the full mile length uh, of the. Uh, it's about a mile, maybe a little less, but anyways. Um, the full length. Um, and then, you know, I would just kind of walk back and forth with the crowd. So that was the first night. I go back the second day, uh, and I noticed that at some point in time, uh, after I guess about midnight was when I left on Friday night, uh, at some point in time they had come by and taken down some of the posters. So I did a response to that. Um, and I believe they got the message because they stopped tearing down the posters. So I'll just post that response in the uh, chat room here. Um, so what I did was where they tore down one poster, I put up four more and I left my business card there with it. And I also left them a little note saying all that is required or all that need be happening. I can't remember exactly how I phrased it, but all that is required for these posters to be here 365 days of the year is for them to take them down again. And they stopped taking them down. However, now there's a there's a, a, a little intersection uh, down at Maine and and uh, geez I can't think of the other Ogilvy no it's not Maine it's down by Maine and Ogilvy but it's a main intersection in Dundas and uh, there's a bar on the corner and it's called the Thirsty Cactus and then across from that is the police station and then uh, there's a couple other stores around there so on that corner specifically. Now, it's a younger crowd that tends to be in there. On that corner specifically, and it, a kind of an interesting thing had happened. So I put up our posters, and they came around, and they put these other little card posters that said free fedoras and pointed to our posters. And I thought that was funny and cute. And I wanted to take a picture of it, but my battery ran out that night. So I, I went home, and I, I come back the next day, and, you know, armed with posters and stuff, and I put up some replacements. And... uh 
I uh, uh, I looked. I was looking for this fedora, this free fedora thing, because I wanted one. You know, I want this free fedora. You know, apparently the patriarchy hands out free fedoras. I want one. Damn it! Where the hell is it? I'm doing this patriarchy wrong. I ain't got a free fedora. I've had to pay for everything. You know, I don't get it. Anyways, I couldn't find it. They literally, I, I think they got a little scared because they literally realized that I was willing to paper the town for 365 days of the year, putting up posters left, right, and center, and make sure that these people, you know, aren't welcome in my town. As a matter of fact, these people who rip down these posters are not welcome in my backyard. I'll kick their asses out of here as soon as they get in. Uh, metaphorically speaking, of course. Um, I will beat them ideologically speaking. You know, I will not put up with their horse shit. Um, I don't care. Um, uh, fan, friend, family, foe, I don't care. If you're going to spew uh, horse shit, I'm going to call you on it. I literally had a one relative question me, and he didn't ca- they didn't care that prostate cancer refi- uh, received 60% of the funding that breast cancer uh, receives. And I lost, I have to say that I, lost, I had immense respect for this relative until he said that. I lost respect for him right then and there. I cannot, I, I cannot have the same respect for that guy uh, ever again because he just, he told me, in no uncertain terms, that a man is only worth 60% of a woman. Guess what? That boat don't float in my books. And I don't care. Family, friend, whatever. I'll toss you to the curb like you're yesterday's trash for that shit. Hmm. Well, everyone, uh, we're fix- about to take a music break. and We'll be right back with Danny Boy, and then he will um, continue to tell us about his adventures at the uh, Cactus Festival. James, if you would please, play us some good music. We'll be right back. 
And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking with Danny Boy about his experience at the Dundas uh, Cactus Festival. Uh, Danny, uh, you were talking about some posters and some people tearing them down. Uh, would you like to continue with that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, uh, yeah, so they tore down their, not only did they tear down their own posters, but it looks like they got caught midway of pulling down a couple more of my posters. Like I said, I replaced them with four. For every one they tore down, I put them up, I put up four more. So it looks, uh, what, when I went back to get this fedora, a picture of this fedora thing, um, it looks like they were interrupted mid tear. Like, it almost literally looks like somebody said, hey, stop that horse shit. Uh, and again, this is right, you know, right at the police station. And I've butted, head with, butted heads with the local police about, uh, you know, men's issues before. Um, and uh, again, I, you know, I, I do talk to them about uh, things um, on, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm adversarial to them on a lot of issues. But I am also very, very sympathetic to them about the uh, the suicide rate of men, and uh, reason you know I, I understand that uh, the, 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 you know again they're they're in a highly uh, highly stressful job, and suicide hits them too. Uh, Sergeant uh, Ian Matthews uh, in Hamilton Police Services here uh, swallowed his revolver back around uh, just I think it was just around December of last year. So while I may butt heads with the police on some issues. Um, I, you know, I am sympathetic to them. Uh, I just wish that they'd stop cowtowing the feminist, you know, bullshit doctrine uh, narrative there. Um, so it's right downtown. It's a pretty popular area. It's a, it gets high volume of traffic. Um, but these people, again, are, you know, for the most part, they're all, um, uh, you know, we're really sympathetic to it. Um, now, when I... Uh, I ran into a, fr- a friend there, Anise, and she was uh, now she was a victim of, of male. She she was beat by her her ex husband. Um, I know that I seen the black eyes before, um, but she's also agreeable to men's human rights as well. She realizes that it's not every man, and she also realizes that you know there are abusive women out there too. Um, so you know the, the, you know even even. You know, even uh, there are even people out there who have been victims who are saying, you know, no, enough's enough, and this is horse crap sort of deal, which is kind of cool. I'm very receptive to to it. Now, I uh, I went to talk to the security guard there. I talked to the security guard the first night on the Friday, and then I went to talk to the security guard again and hand him my card because when I'm putting posters up around these businesses, I like to touch base with them, let them know exactly what we're about. We are non-feminism, but pro, very pro equal rights. Um, you know, and responsibilities too. Let's not forget those, you know, responsibilities that come with those rights. Um, so I like to introduce myself. So it was a new security guard and I went to hand him my card and he says, Oh, I already know about you. And I'm kind of like, wow, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> but he, and I said, Oh, how so? And, and he kind of got a little vague about it. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, what's going on down at the Cax Festival there. I don't think, uh, I, I don't know whether, uh, maybe one of the waitresses or something there might be uh, one of these social justice warriors at a local uh, at the McMaster University or not. Can't really be sure, but it's quite possible. Um, anyways, so yeah, that's how that all plan- pans out. What is this I'm hearing about the possibility that you could possibly get a tattoo? Well, um, we have a local tattoo parlor here in Dundas, and uh, I... Um, I, I know some people who are uh, involved in it, and uh, I've known them for years and years and years, and they actually knew my brother Anthony. Um, so I uh, I had a talk with him and uh, Rick, and I'm thinking that I might uh, throw some business his way, uh, and I'm thinking about getting a Voice for Men tattooed on my forearm. Um, so I'm, that's just kind of something I'm thinking about right now. I don't mind, uh, you know, having a little ink sunk in uh, on Voice for Men, of, uh, you know, regarding a Voice for Men. Uh, you know, I've been supporting Voice for Men for many, many years. Um, so I have no problems with, uh, uh, you know, con- you know, my continued support would all- will always be there. Um, so I'm thinking maybe a little ink would be good. Uh, I'm thinking right on my right forearm, you know, uh, a Voice for Men dot com or just a Voice for Men. Uh, because I am kind of a voice for men here in Dundas, West Hamilton, Hamilton area. Um, you know, I, I am a voice for men here. Um, not a voice for men.com, but I am a voice that, you know, talks about men's issues. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that possibly, you know, maybe uh, we'll, 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 we'll discuss this a little further, maybe talk to Paul about it. And, 
maybe we can set something up to, you know, get me a tattoo. Uh, you know, I think uh, a little ink would be pretty cool. Um, I, I sense a fundraising drive. Well, we, it, well, I'm gonna, well, I got another thing that's going to need a few shekels. And we'll get to that a little later on. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, how, how you doing there, Rick? Um, also, Rick took a whole bunch of literature from me um, and uh, was extremely happy to take it from me um, and, and, and extremely happy to um, uh, extremely agreeable. Him and his wife, Kim, um, you know, I've known them like literally since I was, uh, you know, just about, you know, just out of diapers. Um, they knew my older brother um, and, and they know the suicide factor and they know that, uh, you know, they, they, they know that there's injustice going on and being carried out against uh, uh, men in society here. And they're not, uh, and they're not afraid to speak out against it. Um, uh, kind of as a, an aside, uh, Rick, um, he has a nickname of Hawkeye. Um, he kind of looks like Dog the Bounty Hunter. And exactly the same kind of demeanor, just about the same demeanor too. A little more soft-spoken, but, uh, you know, just pretty much that look. And I have no idea. The guy, you know, the, uh, he's, he's a little older than me and he hasn't got a gray hair on him. I have no idea how the hell that, that plays out. But, you know, some of us are genetically blessed, I guess. <laughs> yes, and some of us are not. <laughs> I'm yeah, starting to yeah. get gray, and I'm just barely into my thirties. But anyway, <laughs> um, I also, I'd also say, I also uh, like to say, give a shout out to Julie, Anthony's last uh, last girlfriend. I ran into her um, again; extremely supportive. Um, she is, you know, a wonderful woman. Uh, she was dating Anthony when he decided to uh, off himself, um, and she was terribly, terribly distraught over that. Um, and, and and it had nothing to do with her at all. She loved Anthony, and uh, she never stopped loving him. Uh, you know, it, uh, it, uh, it was just a shit how things played out. Um, anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, what about some politicians? Uh, okay. You, well, you, you said you talked to some politicians. No, I did talk to, um, uh, it is municipal election year here in, uh, in Ontario. I believe even in Canada. Um, but it is the municipal elections. And uh, so I, I, I always hit the politicians. Um, you know, I'm going to hit them and I'm going to keep on hitting them until, you know, until we see some positive, uh, positive action going on here. Um, so I hit the, the municipal ones and uh, of all of them, there was one who really, really, I, I thought was incredible. Her name is Toby Yule um, and she's, you know, uh, for counselor in Dundas here. And uh, when I started talking to Toby about things, at first she apologized that she wanted to sit down. Now, I, you know what? It's, it's a, a long day standing there working the crowds. I understand. And you know what? I was fresh, and I said, sure, by all means. And she even invited me and Jeb to sit down in, you know, under her little tent and have a discussion with her, which was wonderful. She invited me in, and you know, she wanted me to, you know, she wanted to, to you know, address my issues or, or listen to my issues. I will say that most of the politicians were receptive. Um, this is just my personal choice, okay? Um, it has nothing to do uh, with anything else. Uh, um, they all were fairly receptive. But what I found in, uh, really interesting about Toby was that when I brought up um, some issues and I had made mention of uh, Christina Hoff Summers, who stole feminism, and how, you know, I have a lot of respect for an agreement with Christina Hoff Summers, um, her eyes lit up. And I also mentioned about uh, Camilla Paglia. And again, her eyes lit up. She knew exactly who these women were who are speaking out about, you know, out about the ills of feminism, the lies that feminism is putting out there. And Toby was well aware of them. So that was really, really heartening. Um, I also talked a little bit about what's going on with CAFE right now, how they've got the first center for men and their families. Um, they've got the lease done. They're, they're busy moving things in and picking a day to have a grand opening. Um, I also talked to her about that and how I wanted to bring that to Hamilton. Um, that is, uh, I, I, you know, I want to see a center for men and their families in Hamilton. That's a, that's a personal goal of mine. Um, so Toby was, was an incredible woman. You know, she was an incredible person to talk to. Never mind just woman. She was just an incredible person to talk to. Very knowledgeable, very intelligent. And she was uh, very, very receptive to um, addressing men's issues. Um, um, now, unfortunately, she. This is at the, at the municipal level. 
Um, so, you know, mo- what she could possibly promote would be the Center for Men and Their Families coming to Hamilton as well, um, which would be awesome. Uh, that would be something I'd like to work on. Now, there's something else that kind of comes off as an aside. Habitat for Humanities um, was there as well, and I talked to Sean from Habitat for Humanities, and I'm going to try, if I can, I, you know, I pray I can do this, because like I said, I'd like to see the Center for Men and Their Families here in Hamilton. I would like to start petitioning the government to give up uh, a little parcel of land for the, for, the, for the Center for Men and Their Families, because Habitat for Humanities is open to donating the, uh, the required materials and things like that. They are open to it. We have to put together a proposal and put everything in, in place, but here's the idea. Habitat for Humanities requires that we put in 500 hours. I'm sure that there are a dozen guys and you know a dozen men's human rights activists in the Southern Ontario area who would come and donate that 500 hours to make sure make that building happen. Um, it doesn't even have to be a small parcel of land. It could be uh, as far um, you know it could be a, a, a parcel of land with a derelict building on it. So I, I believe that this is a good idea for us to start looking into it, the men's human rights movement. Habitat for Humanity is across, across the at least in first world nations. It's all through New York, North America, I believe. Are they not down in the states there, Jack? Too. Oh yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I I have uh, I've done some charitable work uh, in, with other organizations, and one of the things that we do is every year we build a house for Habitat for Humanity. Now I'm not personally involved with that. I just uh, donate a little money to it. But yeah, they're big down here. So yeah, I think that this is a uh, an untapped resource for the men's human rights movement, and I think we need to start looking into this really seriously. Um, so that was the municipal level. Again, uh, Toby Yule was really, really receptive. All of the politicians, the, the municipal politicians, were receptive to the ideas. Um, a couple of them kind of scoffed a little bit about you know some of the issues, but that's okay because we don't have to agree on everything. Um, you know, if, if they are 70, if they, if I yeah, find that if they are for 75% of what we're talking about, then, uh, you know, what I, I can agree with them and I can live with that and we can work on the 25% later. Oh yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, uh, if we can just get, get everybody to, to work on one thing, that's better than what we have now. Absolutely. Um, so that's, uh, that was the municipal level. Now, um, <clears throat> Currently in Ontario, we don't have a liberal, um, and this the PCs weren't there in Dundas today or this year. Um, we don't have a liberal uh, um, provincial uh, provincial candidate in my area. So they had up, a, they had, but they did have a tent here, and they did have a uh, um, um, they did have a couple of attendees there, and I did talk with them. Um, now, you know, male genital mutilation, they kind of went hemmed and hawed at, and I'm like, well, we've got legis- you know, we've got laws that protect, um, you know, even draw- drawing a drop of blood from, uh, you know, female's genitals, we need to make a law, you know, we need to make that law, um, ungendered so that there's protection for males as well. Um, now I, I, I know that there are, uh, uh, less evasive procedures for, you know, religion things and, and. Really, I, I can't see any justification for it. But if your God, you know, demands a little bit of a blood sacrifice, then how about just a little bit of pin, a little pinprick to suffice as, you know, this thirsty, this thirsty blood God's sacrifice. Um, you know, there are less evasive procedures than what's currently being done. Um, <clears throat> I also explained that uh, uh, that uh, I, you know, I I was cut when I was a kid, uh, when I was a child, a wee baby. Um, my family did not know the issues or the facts about things, and it was a mistake. Um, so I bear them no ill will. There was ignorance all over the place on why to get it done, um, but there is no excuse for that nowadays. Um, you know, the, we have the internet, we have the information at our fingertips if we so choose to look at it or search for it. Yeah, yeah, we had. Um down, down here close to where I live, we had a, a, a woman who uh, took her son in to get circumcised, and he come out with half a penis and a blood, uh, a diaper full of blood. And uh, he ended up, uh, I, I don't know if he lost all of his penis or 
what, but it was a, uh, you know, they handed her, handed the baby back to the mother screaming and she got home and opened the diaper and there was, it was full of blood. Um, the, the, the baby boy did survive, but, um, you know, it's just, to me, it seems like it's a matter of, uh, people don't, they just don't think anything about it. it it's like, you know, back years ago, you know, a, a kid getting his tonsil, getting their tonsils taken out. You know, no, it was, it was common, simple procedure. Nobody thought anything about it. Well, now we're like, we don't do that anymore because we know it's pretty well pointless unless it's, you know, a, 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 a severe case because they grow back. Well, you know, circumcision for, for, a, for a baby boy, nobody thinks anything about it. Well, yeah, of course I'm going to get my baby boy circumcised. You know, why, why not? You know, nobody thinks anything about it. And um, uh, the people are just ignorant, and they don't even bother to even check. They don't even go on the Internet and check anymore. But well, enough of my rant. Uh, um, what else happened at the festival? Well, I'm going to continue on with the provincial folks there. Um, so that was the one issue I brought up with them. Um, now, the way I broached that with them is, uh, I, you know, I said that, uh, you know, do, uh, do you believe that men and women are equal in Canada? And they said, uh, absolutely. I said, wrong. Women are more, are more equal than men. And that was the, the first example that I cited. The second si- uh, example I cited is uh, a woman's choice to become a, a parent or not. And that revolves around the abortion issue. And I explained our position, uh, the legal parental surrender, to them. And the one guy, he kept on trying to toss out there, you know, well, he should have kept it in her pants. And, of course, you know, my reply you know, was the, the couch reply as well. She should have kept her legs closed then. Um, you know, the, the, these two individuals, uh, usually adults, sometimes teenagers, but usually adults, do the matches marimba knowing that, hey, guess what could happen? Regardless of whether or not you have, uh, you're have, you using birth control or not, birth control does not stop it 100% of the time. There, You know, there is some fallacies there. Condoms can break. Um, you know, the, the girl can accidentally, you know, the girl could accidentally on purpose forget to take the pill too because um, we do know that uh, you know it's not like some women are out there living off their uterus um, so yeah um, the guy kept on trying to defend women he was he was he was a total white knight it was it was uh, he was a simpleton uh, you know whatever uh, you know whatever it, it, it was it was somewhat disgusting and, and and somewhat comical trying to watch this guy defend um, you know, uh, trying to defend his position. He, you know, he figures that once, you know, once his DNA is, uh, you know, incorporated with, uh, the woman's DNA that, you know, he should have no, no say on whether or not he becomes a father or not. And he's, you know, fully willing to become uh, a wage slave for the next 18 years of his life. Um, and he's, and he is not that old either. He was fairly young. Um, so I found that really kind of bizarre. Um, there was a couple other things that I, you know, I talked to them about, you know, again, uh, that was, you know, that, that's the way that went. Um, federal level. Yeah, I see that we're moving along here. Um, and I, I, I guess I'm going to have to rush here a little bit. Um, the federal level, I spoke with David Sweet. Now, David Sweet has, uh, is my member of parliament for the Dundas area here. And Mr. Sweet has agreed to help me work on the issue that, uh, of suicide, um, uh, he's going to do some inquiring for me at the Canadian Mental Health Association. As you, you know, mo- most of you would know that uh, I've been ex- I've been trying to expose the fact that the Canadian Mental Health Association uh, has eleven papers for women's mental health, and you know that's awesome, but only one for men's mental health. Despite knowing the fact that men, you know, make up seventy six percent of the suicide population in Canada across all levels of, you know, across all ages. Sorry. Um, but at the university level, it's twenty to twenty. Or at the university level, twenty to twenty-four year olds, it's eighty percent. They make up eighty percent of the suicides there. Um, so, Mister Sweet uh, was receptive. He actually recognized me. I didn't think he would. Um, but as soon as I handed him my card, he said, uh, "Oh yes, I've talked to you before." And 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 again, he was really receptive. Um, they're starting to listen, there, guys. If you know, guys and girls, if we just start concentrating on hitting them uh you know in in voicing our 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 issues they're starting to be receptive so no matter what the feminist narrative is saying about being inconsequential and stuff like that uh uh-uh the numbers don't lie 
you know, 30,000 hits a day on A Voice for Men alone. And, you know, God knows how many National Coalition for Men's getting, cafes getting, uh, anti-misandry.com's getting, you know, all these other men, Manosphere sites. God knows, you know, what the collective rate is. Uh, Justice for Men and Boys, you know, uh, Mike Buchanan. By the way, Mike, how you doing, brother? I uh, hope you enjoyed that cigar. Remember, Jack, uh, we, we had that little video with Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, Mike Buchanan, a great guy. Really just great guy, funny a pleasure to be around yeah uh danny i'm sorry but we i wish we could go on with this but we're coming to the end of the show it's now that time I have, again yeah i have one other announcement i'd like to make okay and this is just a quick one and this is a heads up i want to bring girl rights what karen strawn to hamilton ontario for a couple of speaking dates so look for that coming up there guys oh that sounds awesome she's She's great. She she really brings in the people, and, and people are really receptive to her message. But yeah, everybody, uh, where it's about that time. Um, hope you enjoyed the show. We appreciate you listening, and uh, take care of yourselves, and uh, take the red pill. Danny, you got any last words? Take the red pill, folks. Keep it between the zipper lines. Enjoy yourself. Play nice with each other. Well, you don't have to play nice with feminists. You can you can call them idiots and stuff. Call them as you see them. And uh, we'll see you next week. Dan and Jack hope you have enjoyed this episode of Blue Collar Red Pill. The song, The Last Ones, by the band Jazar, is used under Creative Commons license and has been modified for this show. Please visit antimisandry.com and avoiceformen.com for more information on the men's human rights movement.